Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on renal cell carcinoma. It is a malignant tumour arising from the renal tubular epithelium. And this picture shows a gross picture of the renal cell carcinoma. So it is the most frequent occurring solid lesion within the kidneys. And if we compare between males and females, males are twice more common to have renal cell carcinoma compared to females. Majority of the cases are present in 50 to 70 years old and most of the cases are sporadic but they are often seen in families with von Hippel-Lindau disease and also tuberous sclerosis complex. So these are some of the associated diseases. So this renal cell carcinoma, it accounts for around 85% out of all the malignant renal tumors in adult. So it is the most commonly seen renal tumor, malignant renal tumor. And there are a few types of renal cell carcinoma, such as clear cell carcinoma, which is the most common type. It arises from the proximal tubules within the kidney. Papillary carcinoma, around 10 to 15 percent of the cases, it arises from the distal tubules in the kidney. And chromophobe carcinoma, that arises from the collecting tubules. It is the least common, where it is around 5 percent out of all the cases. These are some of the factors that increase a person's risk of having renal cell carcinoma, such as smoking, which increases twice times the risk, industrial exposure to some elements, such as cadmium, prior kidney irradiation, family history of von Hippel-Lindau syndrome or hereditary papillary renal cell carcinomas, and also if they have an acquired polycystic kidney disease, which can be secondary to chronic dialysis. So usually, the patients, they are initially asymptomatic and this renal cell carcinoma might be detected incidentally on imaging studies. If they present with symptoms, the usual symptoms, this is the triad of symptoms which are flank pain, painless hematuria where there is blood in the urine but there is no pain and palpable flank mass. So this triad of symptoms or signs occur in around 11% of the cases. This painless gross hematuria is the most common presenting symptom where it presents in around 50% of the cases. So when there is hematuria and it is painless, we have to think of malignancy. It can be renal cell carcinoma or bladder tumour. So there are also other regional symptoms that the patient might have, such as left varicocele. This is due to if the renal cell carcinoma is at the left side. So left-sided tumour may present with varicocele due to invasion of the left renal vein with the tumour and also obstructing the left testicular vein. Extension into the inferior vena cava can also cause lower limb edema where there is swelling of the lower limbs, ascites where there is abdominal distension, liver dysfunction or pulmonary embolism can occur as well. And there are also systemic symptoms if the cancer has metastasized to other parts of the body such as the lungs, liver, where they might have jaundice, yellowish discoloration of the skin, bone, they might have bone pain, and metastasis to the brain, they might have weakness or weakness of the body, limb nodes as well. So 30% of the cases have meds to the paraiotic nodes at presentation. And for tumour, constitutional symptoms such as loss of weight, fever, Anemic symptoms such as fatigue or palpitation where they feel like their heart beats very fast and also night sweats. So these are the, some of the possible symptoms that they might complain of. Also, paraneoplastic syndromes such as hypertension, non-metastatic liver dysfunction, hypercalcemia and polycythemia which is due to the production of erythropoietin by the tumour. So paraneoplastic syndromes may occur in around 10 to 40% of the cases of renal cell carcinoma. The investigations that we can do to confirm the diagnosis is intravenous urogram, CT or ultrasound scan, MRI of the kidneys, and also renal biopsy for pathological diagnosis. So these are the investigations to confirm the diagnosis. Whereas there are also other investigations for the staging of the disease, such as CT of the abdomen to look for any perinephric invasion or adjacent organ invasion or extension into the renal vein, inferior vena cava, 
liver meds or any enlarged limb nodes, CT chest for lung metastasis, and bone skin, especially in patients who have abnormal ALP levels or bone-related complaints with a renal mass present. So this is the view showing there is a left, there is a renal cell carcinoma at the left side. This is the T and M staging for renal cell carcinoma. So for T, there are four stages. T1 is divided into A and B. So T1A is the tumor is confined to the kidney, less than 4 cm in size. T1B is it is more than larger than 4 cm but less than 7 cm in size. So after T1, if the tumor is more than 7 cm, then it is T2. So T2 is also divided into A and B. T2A is 7 to 10 cm, whereas T2B is more than 10 cm in size of the tumor. T3 is where there is extension of the tumor into renal veins or perinephric tissues. That is T3A. Whereas T3B is it extends into the inferior vena cava below the diaphragm. T3C is invading into the inferior vena cava above the diaphragm or the wall of the inferior vena cava. T4 is when there is invasion of the tumor beyond the grotta's fascia. So this is for T staging. For N, it is only N0 or N1. So if there is involvement, metastasis to the lymph nodes, then it is N1. For M, if there is distant meds to other organs, then M1 as well. So the staging groupings, there are stage 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is shown over here. So when there is T3, or N1, then it is considered as stage 3, and if there is metastasis, distant meds, it is stage 4. So this is the staging for renal cell carcinoma. For the treatment of this tumor, for resectable tumors, surgery is done, plus minus adjuvant therapy, and also surveillance after the resection to detect early, to detect any relapse earlier. So the treatment is surgery, which can be laparoscopic or open, retroperitoneal or transperitoneal approach. So the types of surgery, depending on the staging and the size of the tumor, can be partial nephrectomy, which is for those tumors less than 5 cm or in the T1 stage. Total nephrectomy is for those tumors more than 7 cm, and radical nephrectomy is done in T2 disease, T2 staging. So it removes the whole kidney together with the grotta's fascia and also the nearby limb nodes. There's also adjuvant chemotherapy if there's also adjuvant chemotherapy that can be done. So if the patient underwent for definitive surgery, there is no role for the adjuvant therapy. Then after the surgery, we should do surveillance after the resection to detect relapse early. For advanced tumors, there are also other modes of treatment such as immunotherapy, which includes high dose interleukin-2 or cytoreductive nephrectomy. And this performed before starting immunotherapy can improve the survival of the patient. Other treatment include molecular targeted therapy such as sorafenib, which is, an tyro which is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor and also bevacizumab, which is a monoclonal antibody against the VEGF. So that's all for this video. Thank you.